Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. My name is David Pendleton and it's time for some more Ultimate Golf, which I'm really excited about. Today's video is really going to be a mixed bag of tricks to where I'm going to be playing some tour play, so some head-to-head -head matches. As you can see here, I have no trophies on tour number five, the Moonshot Tour. I'm excited to hop into that one. I'll be playing my very first games here on this pre-recorded session for you all to check out. I just wrapped up tour number four. If you want an idea of what I do as far as ultimate golf goes, I'm labeled as a triple threat, which is pretty cool. That means I participate in the uh, tournaments, the one-on-one -on -one tour play, and of course, my favorite, the Royale events. You can see here the ultimate kept standings sitting in second place uh, right now for the season, which wraps up in a few days. Unfortunately, I had to take last week off of most of games, so I did drop from the first position, but that's okay. You can see here my coins, my total earned, my head-to-head -head wins at 746, head-to-head -head win percentage at 88%. Now, we're hoping we can keep that kind of success up on tour number five, but you never know. I have a lot of fun in Ultimate Golf. I hope that if you're new to the channel, you'll check it out and that you'll play the game as well. If you would like to check it out, please look at the description below. In the description, you will find a link that will take you to your app store or to your play store and download the game. If you do that, feel free to connect with me on the game as well. Right here is my friend code. It is K8GYARY8. I'll leave that on the screen for a second and just connect with me. That would be awesome. That's also in the video description below. So like I said, today's going to be a, mac a mixed bag of treats. We're going to play some head-to-head -head matches. We will probably play that Golf Royale that starts in nine minutes. And we'll go ahead and kick it off with our free Big Shot. If you're not familiar with the Big Shot, you get to do this every day. It refreshes every 24 hours. It is one free way the game gives you a daily opportunity to earn more club cards and even some balls if you can get your ball to come close to that target. So we're going to play it today. Looks like we're hitting out of the sand at six miles per hour. I typically try to go with the backspin approach on these types of shots. And then from here, it's just kind of trying to visualize where it's going to go. You know, that's what we're looking to do. It's hard to tell because, you know, we don't have any history with playing with these clubs except for the everyday big shot. So we're not 100% how the ball is going to roll out. But here, at least I did hit an ultimate shot. And you know what? We do stick it in the white ring. So at least we are getting some free prizes today. Let's see what we get here out of the bronze golf bag. Some Raptor Club cards. We'll take that. The Spider Ball is actually a good ball. So I'm happy with that for free. And we pick up 250 coins along the way. So, you know, nothing to get too stoked about except that free Spider Ball. Hey, we'll take the free inventory anytime we can get it. But you can also see here what you can win so we can get those rookie trophy balls. That's awesome. The Mojave ball and up to 5,000 coins. Even getting some cash in there as well, which is really nice. If you want to continue to play again, you could buy three shots for only $1.99. And the nice part about that is if you buy those shots, that wind angle and that wind mile per hour will remain the same. So if you, you know, record your gameplay or you just kind of remember exactly where you set up that, you'll be able to dial that one in and possibly get yourself a hole in one. That's enough talking. Let's get to the playing. Here we go with the Moonshot Tour. I don't know what to expect. I will tell everybody, though, a lot of people that follow me know that I am a space geek. As you can see here with my logo, um, having, you know, a kind of a space and a planet-themed uh, image here with that planet having dimples in it just like a golf ball would so I think that's kind of neat all right we're on the historic Torrey Pines for our first game here this is a par four we're going to continue to rock the basic ball for now we'll see if any of these courses make up or step up our game I haven't had to use anything in one-on-one -on -one play besides a basic ball I do save my good balls for tournaments, right? Because as you progress through the weekly standings, you're going to move up in tournaments very quickly as far as your division goes. You know, once you start getting up into like these pro divisions, even veteran division, the wins do get pretty big. You're going to want to save those balls for that type of play. Now, when it comes to strategy of the game, I mean, really, that's just my strategy. Some people follow it. Some people don't. 
The most important advice that I can give you is to make sure you play the game for what's fun for you. So if you want to get on these low-level tours and you want to knock around some premium balls and just hit them out of the park, uh, that's awesome. That sounds like fun for sure. For me, I try to give strategy. I try to give good advice on how to keep your balls uh, for those tournaments because you can just win them right back or maybe even win some better ones. But again, the most important thing is to have fun, enjoy the game. We're making our putt and we're heading to the tiebreaker. So here we go. Our back is against the wall already on our very first game. Definitely liking the uh, graphic for the Moonshot Tour here that uh, Ultimate Golf and Mini Clip has put together. Looks pretty neat. All right, look how close that hole is to the front of the green. That's a little, that's a little tight there, but that's all right. We're going to go max backspin on this shot, okay? And really, you know, all we're trying to do is just get it closer to the pin than our opponent. And one strategy that I do is I just let my opponent go first, okay? You can see that we're playing simultaneously, so... They didn't make a very good shot there on their tiebreaker shot. So I know I don't have a lot of pressure on me. I'm just going to aim right at the pin, stick it right there, two feet to the hole. And that's what I do, everybody. No secrets. Some people do ask me how I keep my winning percentage high. Well, one thing is I really spent time uh, building my clubs up, okay? I compete in a lot of tournaments almost every single day. I also play those Royale events, which you're going to see here shortly. And that's a great way to earn clubs, club cards. I also go in here and I make sure that every day I try to complete my daily missions. I also complete my weekly missions. And as you do that, you can see that you do earn season long rewards as well, which is really neat. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to head on to our next game here do another head-to-head -head match. Hopefully we can sneak that in within the next three minutes. We will see. Looks like we're playing guest 674120 using the cruiser ball on us. Cruiser ball is basically the first ball of the selections that you have. Meaning it's um, on the lower end, the, ch the uh, more uh, reasonable ones to purchase if you're going to use your cash. And I'm talking about the in-game cash, like the cash you earn inside the game to purchase. So it's a great ball for beginning players. As you can see here, we're going to stick with that basic ball. We do hit the ultimate shot. And we're trying to get this game done before that three-minute warning. I'm hoping that we can get into a Royale event. I could have waited, but three minutes seems like a long time to wait when we can try to sneak in one more game. Now here we're getting six mile per hour headwind, basically. So what we're going to have to do is account for that. So if we put our ball guideline to the hole right there, you know, we're going to want to move it, you know, pretty significantly past the hole. You know, we're going to bring it up to max and then even apply a little bit of overpower. And we are doing a good job hitting an ultimate shot right now. So hopefully this one comes right down towards the pin and leaving us for an easy putt. That's exactly what's going to happen. You know, I mean, it's not right next to the pin, but that's okay. It's right here in the distance putting in for a birdie opportunity. And you can see our opponent is already in the hole. That puts a little pressure on us to make sure we make this putt. Which brings me to the point that putting is not always easy. You can see there, I almost missed it to the left-hand side, but we were able to sneak it in and force that tiebreaker. Let's see what tiebreaker hole we get this time. I was hoping we could try to win it in regulation so we could hurry up and get to that Royale, we may not make it in time. So you see, this is basically where I want to shoot. 
I'm going to let my opponent go, which they've done, and see what type of shot they do. Well, they're, they're a little bit past the hole. I think that should be pretty easy to beat. I think we're set up good enough to get close enough to win. And, of course, we hit that ultimate shot. So yeah, it should be pretty accurate as far as where I was aiming. Ooh, we almost snuck it in on the bounce to get the all-elusive hole-in-one. Very, very close. Now let's hurry up and exit out of here. Let's see if we can get into that Royale event. We are two for two so far on the one-on-one -on -one play. Did we make it in time? I don't know. We did. Look at that. All right, it's going to cost us 6,250 gold coins to enter. We are entered into the Random Royale. Now, I'll tell you one thing about this is I am in Pro Division for the first time this week. And it, uh, you know, it is more challenging on these Royale events. If you're not familiar with the Royale events, these ones are not the instant ones. These are the regular ones that run every 30 minutes. That means it's going to compromise of three rounds of two minutes each. The first round is going to have 50 players in it. The top 25 are going to advance. When it comes to advancement, it does not matter if you get first place in the first round. It does not matter if you get 25th place. The only thing that matters is that you make it to round number two. You make it to the next round by landing every ball on the green. That is the only way to earn points. If you do not land on the green, you will not earn points. You will not pass go and you do not collect $200. Oh, wait a minute. That's a different game. So I'm just kidding. If you don't land on the green, though, really, you do not earn any points. Okay, so that is important to know. You have to land on the green to get points. And the closer to the hole that you get, the more points you earn. And if you do something like that and you get the ball into the cup, you see that you earn a massive amount of points rather than uh, just the smaller ones that you get. But you'll see here, you know, we're trying to hit these balls as fast as possible. That's one thing. The more shots you can get off, the more points you're going to get. On this particular event, this is a cumulative score, meaning that every shot that you take and every point that you earn is going to be combined towards the end. Okay, they're going to add all the points up, and that's your score for the round. There are some events that only take your top six shots only. So on those type of events, you can slow down a little bit and you can really try to dial in the shot and get a little bit closer. But for these types of events, the name of the game is to really fire off as many shots as possible while also trying to be as accurate as possible. Look at that. Less than two inches away. Oh my goodness, we are so close. When it comes to the shot out of the rough, okay, like you just saw right there, I immediately apply max backspin, and then I immediately shoot, um, trying to get the timing down to hit as close to an ultimate shot, which is a perfect shot, uh, as I can. It's difficult to do, but, you know, some of these needles move a little slow, and if you let that needle go back and forth, you're going to waste time, and you're going to, you know, not have enough shots. You can see here that we did advance. And like I said, it does not matter if you're in first. It doesn't matter if you're in 24th. The only thing that matters is moving on to the next round because your scores will not carry over, okay? Now, in round number two, we're going to get down to the top 25, and then it's going to cut it down to the top 13. So we do need to finish in the top 13 in order to advance to the final round. You can see there that even with one hole out, I was in fourth place. So let's hope that we can finish in the top 13 here and then move on to the final round, round number three, where the prizes get really good, especially in pro division. So I'm hoping that I get there and I'm hoping that I can show you what those prizes look like. Here we're hitting from really far away at this point. So this is going to be taken with our big foot. Oh, a great shot to the left. That's not going to be good considering that's the way the wind was blowing. But you know what? I'm happy that we at least just landed right there on the green. Actually, it wasn't that far away. This is one of those rough iron shots I was telling you about that I just try to get in there and hit it as fast as possible. I do apply that max backspin. And then I try to overpower, underpower, and curl my shot based off really quick reading that initial wind angle. Here we're hitting out of the sand. I think that's the first time in this event that we hit out of the sand. So far, so good. We've landed every single shot on the uh, green. There is a quick fire ultimate shot. So 
I got that shot off super fast, pretty accurate, being only two yards away. Really nice when you can do that and you're not really making any adjustments at all for the wind. Okay, here this shot was pretty far back. Again, we're taking that with our long iron club and my, the club I like to use is the Bigfoot. I'm pretty happy with that shot, especially from that type of distance. Again, this is gonna be one of those shots out of the rough. You can see there that the wind was blowing from right to left which is why you saw me apply so much right curl. The shot did come in pretty straight. It just came in a little bit too, too long, right? Too fast. Another one out of the sand. This is gonna be a good shot out of the sand. We're gonna get that one within, a, a, well, within three feet, so picking up almost another 700 points. This is another rough iron shot. Again, I apply my backspin. I pull back on the trigger and I just let go basically as soon as possible. I've kind of got an idea as far as the timing goes on how to get it you know, pretty close to an ultimate shot. This is gonna be our last shot as we only had a few seconds left, but you can see here that we're definitely moving on to the final round. All right, we do advance. And look at that, we do advance in first place this time. Uh, we can only hope to get so lucky in the next round. But the next round is where it really counts, you know. This is one we want to get to. We've made it, all right? At the end of the day, we've made it. We're going to earn some prizes, which is nice. But this is one of my favorite parts of the game. Now, there are some days of the weekend on the weekends where they have the instant royales where these things are running every three minutes and they're only two rounds. So if this is the type of thing that suits your personality and your game style, uh, you know, check those out too. Here we go right out of the rough. So we know what we're doing backspin and then letting this thing go pretty quickly. Just like that. Ooh, I thought somebody almost made it right there. Look at that. There's another person almost made it. Two shots out of the rough to begin with. I prefer the shots out of the sand. I tend to do the best out of the sand for some reason over uh, any other shots. That one's coming in really nicely, though. We'll take that. I've had some good success so far in this particular event with that, um, with that long iron. Now, here, I need to get better timing with my Atlas Club. All right, this is basically... Uh, a very, very slow moving needle. As you saw, look at that. Somebody put the basic ball in the cup for the hole out. That person, great job. Now that means we need to get one. If we're going to even think about trying to win, we're going to have to get ourselves a hole out here as well. That was a rough iron shot. I shouldn't have zoomed in like that. I should have just taken the shot like I normally do. Here's that big foot again. I've had some pretty good success with this club so far. I did have to go full overpower there. And I'm afraid this one may not land on the green. Oh, it's not going to land on the green while we're sitting in second. That's going to cost us significant placing in this event, unfortunately. I just let everybody down. We were in the competition to maybe win until I did that dud. You know, but that happens sometimes. It stinks when it happens in the final round, but at least we made it to the final round for that to happen. You'd hate to do that in the first or second round and then not qualify at all. Five, four, three. We're not going to get another shot off. I tried. Couldn't get it there. Well, you know what? It wasn't meant to be on this particular one, but we're still going to win some prizes. You can see their fourth place. Absolutely. I really feel if I'd have just landed that one shot on the green, we could have easily picked up, you know, the 600 points that we needed to pick up the win. So good job, Dougie. Let's open our platinum bag. Some sand iron clubs. The Mojave ball is a great ball. I like that. We got the spider ball, three cruisers, 19,000 coins, and we earned some points for our country club as well. Country Club is basically a group that you can be part with with your friends, strangers, make new friends, whatever you want to do. 
Very similar to clans in other games, if you're used to that verbiage. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and continue with the Moonshot Tour. We are two for two so far on this particular tour. So we've played a big shot, and we ended up in the white circle. We've played two games of tour play. We've won both of those in tiebreaker shootouts. And we've also participated in a Royale event, which is nice. Here we go. We have another par four here. Getting a direct headwind. We're just going to go right down the center of the fairway. Now, I do have the habit of just... Every single time I play, I just let it go back to full overpower, and I just try to rip this thing as far as I can. Must be my personality, must be the my gaming style that I'm playing, but I just can't seem to stop myself from just trying to just go full blast on every single shot. Now, for me, it works out. I've really got used to the timing of the game, right, and and how to get that thing to stop at ultimate, or at least close enough to ultimate to do well. Hmm, here we're, we're caught in between clubs. So that means I'm not able to, to pull my club backwards because then it goes to my wedge. Now, my wedge isn't strong enough to get to the green, so I've got to bring it up here and go with my short iron. So, you know, we might have to just underpower this shot a tad. And really all I want to do is just make sure that I land on the green and that I'm getting my putt. So... Which I am. My opponent is already in the hole. They didn't have the same type of struggles that I had. That's also a common theme for me. I, I tend to take my time a little bit more than opponents. Uh, I very rarely ever finish a hole ahead of my opponent. You know, unless they, of course, hit their ball out of bounds or in the water or something like that. But so far, this is going to be our third game. It's going to be our third tiebreaker shot. And I'm just hoping that we can pick up another win. All right, this one looks a little new. Not too sure if I've played this one before in a tiebreaker format. Now, I like the Stingray Club, okay? If you're a newer player to the game, I think the Apollo Club is the best one to start off with until you get this one to a level four. Once you get this one to a level four, I mean, I'm really sold on it. Um... It's got a great backspin. It's got a great accuracy. I'm a big backspin player. I think that the backspin really makes our shots more accurate, especially if you get used to hitting ultimate and knowing where to land. Just like that right there. Very close. I think every shot so far in the tiebreaker, we've been within three feet. And if you're able to get shots down like that, you're going to have a lot of success in the one-on-one -on -one play. So here we're picking up another win. We're earning some... Uh, or not, or some, some country club points for our team. And you'll always want to make sure that while you're playing that you're checking off those missions, okay? And you're going, then you're collecting your points. All right, now we're up against JD Man 420. All right, this one is a little bit different. Everything's been a par four so far. Par four <laughs> so far. Bit of a tongue twister there. All right, let's see here. Let me see if I go into my trap. Yep, just going to go ahead and go with the max overpower. And, of course, I hit a great shot this time. But that's okay. Look at that. We clicked the fairway. And we're moving on down just fine. No big deal. That'll set us up here for our shot to pin for shot number two. All right, we're going to have no problem adjusting this shot. We're going to go with the max backspin again. That'll be a common theme when you see me play max backspin on most of my shots. We're going to put it somewhere right around right there. In the one-on-one -on -one format like this, I don't uh, get too caught up around accuracy yet. You know, I'm okay to go to tiebreakers. That doesn't bother me. Now, when I'm playing a tournament, you know, if you check out my channel and you look in the playlist section, 
of my videos here and you look for the ultimate golf folder, you'll see that I spend a lot of time uh, tweaking my shots and trying to get more accurate to pick up those hole in ones and those eagles on the par fours and of course and of course trying to pick up those albatrosses on the par fives. But in the one on one play, I don't put that type of pressure on myself yet. The winds are very low so far in tours one through five, and you're able to just really play by feel and get a good idea of how your clubs roll. That's also another tip that I would say to most players in the game, especially if you're a newer player, is you know really pick out the clubs that you like, whatever makes sense for you. Are you a backspin player? Are you a topspin player? Are you a player who likes a good ball guideline, which is called shot view? Um, are you somebody you know, who likes the accuracy stat of a club, pick the clubs that best suit your playing style, okay? And make sure that in the games that they do suit your playing style. And if so, stick with those clubs, okay? Stick with those clubs and stick with a ball or two. And that's really going to help you in the long run because you're going to start to get an understanding of, you know, where you need to aim at in order to get your ball close to the hole. You're going to get a good understanding of how your ball rolls out, okay? So, for example, if you're a beginning player and you don't have a great shot view, meaning, you know, you're not really able to see exactly where your ball is going to go after you land and then its destination towards the hole, if you continue to use that club and you continue to use the same type of ball, you're going to start to learn. You're going to start to remember, okay, when I hit this ball, it rolls really far. Um, so I need to account for that by aiming you know, further away from the pin. Uh, so like, you know, a good example would be here, like on my driver, you know. So let's say that my driver um, doesn't have a great shot view, right? So right here, you know, it looks good. If I hit the ball right here, though, the wind is blowing from right to left. So it wouldn't really be a good idea for me to shoot right here because I, if I hit a great left, I could hit this slope and roll down to the rough. So that I know that with this club, if I start over here, the wind is going to push me back to the middle of the fairway. And I won't go full overpower this time just for the visual purposes here because I'm going to try to hit ultimate. And I do hit ultimate. So now I know that based off my history with this club, because this is the only driver that I really ever use in the game once I unlocked it. And you can see that's exactly what happened. Uh, I knew where to aim to get into the middle of the fairway. Now, when we take a, a look here, I mean, I'm almost dead center middle of the fairway. Look at that. When we take a look here at our short iron, right? Here, I'm going to go max backspin. But you can't really tell where the ball is going to go exactly. You know, you can guess. But if you use your club a lot, your guessing is going to become more accurate. It's going to be more of an educated guess, right? Because you have history with your club. You've used it so many times you have good familiarity with how it rolls out, right? So for me, again, just kind of guessing here. If I was playing a tournament, I'd probably get a lot closer, but at least we hit an ultimate shot. And we come in probably within five yards, six feet, not, not yards, but feet. So six feet away from the pin or the hole, and now we just put in to draw again and... As it is becomes common with games like this, the higher you start to get up through the tours, and we're still very low, we're in tour number five, but as you progress through the tours, you do end up going to more and more tiebreakers. Uh, the odds of winning in regulation really flip and more games than not head into that tiebreaker shot. But so far, you're all good luck with me. Even though you're not here with me right now live, you're going to be watching this pre-recorded and you're helping me towards an undefeated session so far. Now, I probably shouldn't have said something like that as I'm in the middle of a tiebreaker because I'm probably just jinxed myself, right? But we'll see. Let your opponent go first. You see, they're, they're so far away from the pin with an ultimate shot. We should be able to beat that, no problem. I always set up where I think I want to go, and if my opponent hits a great shot, I might zoom in and make some very, very minor tweaks. But there we go. They're 18 feet away. We're three feet away. And we just keep it rolling.
We've already knocked out 75 of the available 400 trophies on the Moonshot Tour. So I would say so far we are a great success, as Borat would say. All right, Nikki D, I feel like this is going to be a fierce competitor. I feel like this could be our first loss. I don't know why. I just feel like the, you know, the icon loaded uh, for their particular name and image. I feel like they're serious. Let's take a look at their stats. And this is one thing you can do, too. You can take a look at somebody's stats. It doesn't like they participate in tournaments. Well, they only win 51% of their games. So maybe I was wrong. Ultimate shot there. This time you saw me move my target over to the left-hand side of the screen because the wind was blowing from left to right. So this one will also put me, you know, towards the middle of the fairway. And now we play shot number two. Ooh, our opponent is way down there on the green. We'll see if they make that putt. We better hurry up and shoot before we run out of time. Oh, we still have half our time left. Okay, ultimate shot. Our opponent made their putt. You can saw it going in. We're right next to the hole. And we're heading to another tiebreaker. So uh, we'll see. I'm not out of the woods yet. I said I could possibly lose this game. I don't know why I had that feeling going into it. I hope that I'm wrong. I don't say that too often that I hope that I'm wrong. So I want to record that one and use it against me one day. Maybe send it to my wife. Uh, she would like to hear that, I'm sure. All right, what do we have today? We are going to be playing a tiebreaker here with our driver, everybody. Not too often do you take a tiebreaker shot with your driver. Oh, our opponent. Our opponent is making a good shot. I think it's been the best shot against us so far. We hit ultimate. I think it's going to go where I want it to go. It's going to get there. Ooh very, very close. Again, 2.9 feet away with the driver. We'll take that. That was a good game. Now they're out of here already. It's going to try to get a rematch, but, you know, that didn't happen, unfortunately. Let's see what else we have going on here. Head to head again. Not going to play any tournaments today. Um, well, at least like during this gameplay. I'll probably save that for later on tonight. I think this is a good one here, though. We're going to go ahead and see if we can pick up the, wood, the win here against Daily Wood. If we do, we're going to call it a nice little session. I think we've accomplished a lot of things today. Hopefully, I've given you some little nuggets throughout this uh, video that'll help you with your gameplay or at least help you see how I approach these types of games, which is a common question that I get. What's my approach? What's my strategy? How do I go about tour play? All that kind of good stuff. So here we go again. Reaching back, letting it rip with the ultimate shot, which we do hit. The ball comes in silky smooth over 300 yards with the basic ball. Not bad, not bad at all. Especially in these low winds, you know, we're not getting like a good wind push, but their one seemed to have the fairway that really sloped, you know, downhill. So that probably helped out a little bit. Oop. All right, go with my backspin. And we'll just aim right up there. Should be close enough to get us within a decent putting range. Ultimate shot again. Oh, we hit the 
the pin. Oh, boy. Hit the pin. Don't see that one too often. That's how accurate it was. Our opponent's in there. Well, we're in. And for the final game of the night, we are heading to another tiebreaker. Can we keep the session undefeated? That is going to be the question. So if we win this game, we should be more than a quarter of the way of closing out tour number five, the Moonshot Tour already. Looks like maybe we have a, a group of seagulls here flying across the course over the mountains towards the shoreline down there. So scenery on this one is really nice. I like it. Again with the max backspin, we're just going to kind of aim right up here. Our opponent is way off to the right-hand side. Okay, one thing to look for too with your opponent's shots is if there's a big slope on the fairway. We could have seen if his ball would have rolled backwards, but it didn't appear anything happened there. So we just take our shot, and look at that, 1.35 feet away to the hole. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If so, hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up button. Really try out Ultimate Golf. You can see I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm passionate about the game. If you check it out, please use the link in the video description below. Thanks, everybody.